Hello and welcome to the widow's oil. If we look here in Hebrews 6, um, the heading there in the New King James Version here is the peril of not progressing. I spoke about this before, about the importance of the milk doctrines. Um, if you look there, it says there, let's read it quickly. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles in Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. And then it says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have uh, tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. So what I've seen um, in the uh, few months that I've been um, busy with my channel is that most of what I speak about in, involves these milk doctrines. Now, um, they obviously involve the first two, repentance from dead works and faith towards God, because I speak a lot about the fact that we are saved by faith and that um, falling into works is a very grave uh, danger for believers. And you can even see it here in this um, part here where we read it's impossible that when you when you've been enlightened and you fall away to be um to be restored. Now, if you, for example, think of the Roman Catholic Church, it's impossible. Even if you show them the, the Bible, the truth, they they just never are reformed. They even if you think of the so-called Reformation with Martin Luther, that is a reformation of the Catholic Church. Now they actually split again from the Catholic Church because you couldn't reform the Catholic Church because it was already heretical. It had already split again from the Orthodox Church um, around about a thousand years after Christ, according to the history uh, we are given. Now, this shows to us that it's a very um, serious matter, this. And it all starts with people that are trying to be righteous by their own works, which the Bible calls dead works. It causes such great confusion that some people even say that Paul is a false prophet. Um, and for a while, some of the arguments really made me wonder about it. Because when I was still... Um, new to to this the the way the modern church mixes the old and the new covenant and doesn't even though they they speak of it there is so much confusion at the moment that you you sort of get confused and then you you question the things Paul says um now since I've come to perfectly understand that Jesus and Paul and Peter and James and John, they are all speaking the same thing. But if you do not understand, if you, you're full of this mixed wine of Babylon, it can really shipwreck your faith. For example, you can start to think Paul is a false apostle and you need to follow only Jesus. And then you are always told, uh, Jesus said, um, he didn't come to abolish the law and the prophets. They don't stress the fact that he actually came to fulfill it. And it's all Judaizing to get us back into keeping the law and relying on works of our own. Um, and yeah, I say, uh, I, I'm actually speaking of the spirit that that works in us to to drive us to do to do that not specifically even of people although 
the, the Bible says that spirit works in the sons of disobedience. But at this point, we have all been deceived. In a way, it's like that book quotation that said, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Our times feel to me like that because it's obvious that all of us have been deceived in some way, but the way it's a good time now is people are starting to acknowledge their deceptions and we are actually um, able to freely examine the scriptures and speak about all the things and um, stop labeling each other and fighting each other with the sword of the spirit and rather spiritually um, beat our swords into plowshares and plow together and help each other because all of us are seeing different aspects. This seems to be the believers today. Um, you, this might be a well-known thing to you. It's a good illustration. The, it's called the blind man and the, the blind men and the elephant. And um, it basically involves many blind people feeling uh, different parts of the elephant and um, they each uh, have a different um, conception of what it is they feel. This is very much what I see happening at the moment. Um, Paul wrote, we see as in a glass darkly, and it does seem to be true for us, even though Christ already came to enlighten us. I see a lot of this, and then people fight about it, you know, rather than working together and putting together all the things we see with our spiritual eyes, the little we see, because we can see, but we're obviously short-sighted or our sight is not perfected yet. We, we could help each other and even though we may not see the full picture, we will be more prepared when the Lord reveals the truth to us so that we do not just reject the truth. What we see is a lot of division. And the Apostle Paul actually spoke of this division to the Corinthians. Um, in 1 Corinthians 1, he actually chides them for their sectarianism. He says, now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So we see in the history of, of the earthly church, um, and I say the earthly church to make a, a difference between the church building on earth, which we call the church, and then the, the actual New Jerusalem, the faith we are given, where the true body of Christ resides in a spiritual sense. Now, in that there is no division in the spirit, because that is a true faith that uh, Jesus and even though as believers we may um, be divided in our understanding, it's because of a shortcoming in us and in our understanding and not in the faith as it was given to us by Jesus, who was worthy to open the scroll and reveal the faith um, when he walked the earth and to his apostles after his resurrection and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Um, but I want to think of the that which the world calls and sees as the church. So there, there has been great division in saying I'm a Catholic and I'm a Protestant to the point of killing each other. And then you had the Reformation and then you had people saying, I'm of Luther, I'm of Calvin, um, I'm of um, uh, Wesley, a Wesleyan, you know, um, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Baptist, I'm a charismatic, and, and so it goes on to our day. And this all shows that the immaturity and 
we need to, in order to have unity, we need to be mature. In Ephesians 4, it says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Okay, so he was speaking to them at that time. They Remember, they had the Holy Spirit poured out on them, so they had a unity in their understanding, but they still fell for wrong doctrines, just as we do today. And then he speaks here of the fivefold ministry to equip them, saying that the work of this fivefold ministry is for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. It mean, doesn't mean that we as an individual are perfect. I think it means the body of Christ is a perfect man um, as a collective. Uh, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we can see there there is a unity and a maturity to, to be reached. And then he says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. He says there is a unity and there shouldn't be these divisions, they are not right. We shouldn't have denominations and all different understandings because there is one body and one spirit and one faith and one baptism, one God, the Father, and one Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. And then he speaks here of the unity of faith, which obviously comes with this fullness, the maturity, and says there that if we are not in that state of maturity, we are actually children and being tossed and to and fro by every wind of doctrine, which he actually says is planned because he speaks of deceitful plotting. So it's, it's a plan by our enemy to divide us, divide and conquer and then it speaks of growing up in love and actually working together to edify ourselves so that is my plea is that we will no longer be fighting each other about who is right and whose doctrine is wrong because I'm starting to think all the doctrines have some truth in it and some errors it's a mix, and we need to work together. Um, the Lord's really pressed on my heart this idea of gathering, and the, the gathering is not going to happen by people joining together and then trying to worship God. It is going to happen by each person being reconciled to the truth in Christ and being made one with God the Father and Jesus Christ by his word and spirit living in us. When we are connected to the Father, then automatically we will be able to be one and we will be able to have a true unity. So I'm wondering if, and this is just my thought, it's just my thoughts I'm sharing with you because I feel it's important that we think of these things. And while I don't want to just speak um, things and maybe be in error and you hear it wrong and, you know, I cause you stumbling, I want us to mature a bit and be able to think about things and talk about things so that we can help each other 
to get more unity and to get more understanding. Um, my experience has been that from most, most doctrines where people have set up a doctrine, there is some truth in it. They usually see a truth, but the problem is they seem to get stuck at that place. Um, it, it, to me, it almost feels like they reach a point of some sort of revelation of somebody. And then many people gather around that person and then they make, it's like they make a camp with tents. I'm speaking spiritually, yeah, but then they refuse to move on. And we are supposed to spiritually move on um, in our journey to the spiritual New Jerusalem. You know, almost like the story Pilgrim's Progress. Um, but people make camps and then they stay at that camp and if you go there and you spend some time with them um, or you maybe think that you know that you can it's a resting place then they start to tell you this is the new Jerusalem this is the place and they refuse any new revelation uh, and they start to fight anybody that's outside their camp uh, you will know what I speak of if you listen to my channel. It would have, you would have had, probably had this type of experience. Or if you haven't, you will, um, and you will come to understand the thing that I speak of. So that that is sort of keeping us away from understanding, and we have been purposefully deceived. This time of great deceit and, and lies in our world has been planned this way. It didn't just happen. 